Right, good afternoon. Uh, today is the 20th of October, uh, 2023. My name is Ben Walker. Thank you for joining me. Uh, what I'm doing here is a little stream, just a quick one in the afternoon, um, because we just want to take a look at those by-election results from last night. So um, thank you for joining us. You can watch this stream on Twitter. Most of you probably are. Twitter.com forward slash BritainLX or X.com forward slash BritainLX. And you can also join the conversation on YouTube uh, where you can comment and send your thoughts and whatever. Um, to do that, just go to YouTube, search BritainLX, subscribe, and you'll find the stream running as what you're seeing now. But yeah. What I want to do here is just talk you through the by-election results, what they mean, what they don't mean, and also we're going to take a look, we're going to take a bit of a deep dive. I've been able to model how probably each and every one of the wards up in the seats, the by-elections being held, how they voted, and that's the interesting thing. You know, it's easy to say Tamworth voted Labour, Bedfordshire voted Labour, but what, what, but what about which bits of Tamworth, which bits of Mid-Bedfordshire, that's what I want to have a look at here today. So, uh, thank you very much for joining us. My name is Ben Walker, I'm the co-founder of Britain Alex. I'm a data journalist for the New Statesman, and full disclosure, I am a borough councillor with the Labour Party. But when it comes to elections, public opinion, I prefer to stick spreadsheets rather than my own, you know, personal prejudices, and I hope you can see through that as well. Right, so let's get to it. Let's have a look at what happened last night. Um, this is record-breaking stuff, okay? Yes, we are in the danger zone. Let's start with Mid-Bedfordshire, the election that wasn't meant to go the way it was, because when you think about it, countryside seat, not much in the shape of an opposition to the Conservatives, and it was a Labour game. And what you can see here, you see the Tory vote previously. Last election it was 60% virtually halved, or almost halved, at 31%. The Liberal Democrat vote is up from 13% to 23%. On the night they were saying their vote had doubled, they just underperformed that. Uh, the Labour vote, meanwhile, had gone up from 22% to 34%. The constituency polls, there were two polls conducted of the constituency back in uh, July and August. They weren't far off. They weren't far off what we saw here. Um, those polls had Labour ahead, or Labour neck and neck with the Tories, and, you know, this is all margin of error stuff, really. So what we saw in Mid-Bedfordshire was what those polls, they were Labour commissioned, but they weren't wrong, were they? So, yeah, something to think about there, something to chew over there, I think. Anyway, uh, Tamworth, meanwhile, this, I think, is more of the telling result, and I want more attention on Tamworth than I would on Mid-Bedfordshire, if I were you. Um... Last election, it went 66% Conservative. Now that's down to 41%. And then you have the Labour vote up from 24%, almost doubling to 46%. A clear Labour gain, albeit only with a lead of five points. And I say only almost as if I'm being quite critical there. But um, I just want to take you to what Britain Predicts was saying um, back in August and September and pretty much throughout the entirety of the campaign and it was neck and neck. Uh, the Conservatives, according to Britain Predicts, which is a polls-based model which takes the polls and tries to translate it onto every constituency and it tries to work out, you know, if a seat has been swinging in the past, it's likely to have a lot of swing voters now. Okay, it tries, it works off that and it's had good form and it's occasionally been wrong, but I will defend it to the death because it's done, it's, it's got things closer than others and um, it's an all right model. It's just terrible in places like Mid Bedfordshire. But the model anyway expected Conservative 40%, Labour 40%, with the Reform Party on 10%, Greens saving their deposit on 6 and the Lib Dems on 5%. When it comes to the smaller parties, the model does rather poorly, uh, but it's the two big parties, the two front runners, that I think the model is pretty good at. And just going back to the result there, we come away with 41% for the Conservatives, um, overperforming the model by one point, and 46% for Labour, overperforming the model by six points. You will also note that for Reform, who are coloured in UKIP's colours here, uh, they come away with 5%. And actually, it's 5.4%. I think 4% meaning they've saved their deposit. That's pretty that's pretty all right, actually. But nevertheless, compared to what we were saying, it's still down on what um, 
the model, what the polls basically are saying. Once more, an election where reform underperforms uh, what we expect. Other parties, 7 8% in both Mid Bedfordshire and Tamworth, respectively. Uh, nothing much to say there. I do note that um, in Tamworth, Britain first beat uh, UKIP in terms of votes. So I think the votes were um, reform, then Lib Dems and Greens, and then Britain First and UKIP. And it was pretty like, you know, Lib Dems, Greens, Britain First and UKIP were quite pulling, pulling away the same votes there. If you totted up all the parties of the uh, radical slash far right, I think that gets you close to 8 or 9%. So when our model has reform on 10, and you add up, Reform plus UKIP plus Britain first. I think that does, that that's like eight or nine percent. Something to think about there. But yes, very much the results of what we saw last night and the results of what we saw uh, in Mid Bedfordshire and Tamworth. Disastrous for the governing party. Um, over very much, you know, we expected it neck and neck in Tamworth. It was a Labour gain. We didn't expect the Tory vote to fall as far as it did in Mid Bedfordshire. But it did. It, f it fell in line with what we've been seeing with by-elections elsewhere. You know, what's been happening is in by-elections, the Tories have been, generally speaking, with the exception of Oxford and South Royslip, underperforming the polls. They underperformed here and uh, by quite a margin. I think, I think Britain predicts had the Tories in Med Bedfordshire to come away with, I think, just about 40%. If you factor for other by-elections... That means it should be around 27 to 35%. And look what happens. The Tories come away with 31%. So an underperformance of the polls, but in line with other disastrous by-election showings. And this is the thing. We're, we're getting too normalised, aren't we, to um, to the state, to, 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 to poor Tory performances here. So it's almost like, oh, yeah, yeah, they did disastrously. Kind of expected that. That doesn't really say as much. And this is the thing. What does the Mid-Bedfordshire and Tamworth by-elections tell us? And Mid-Bedfordshire, I think, tells us um, that the apathy, the feeling of, you know, disaffection with the governing party by the governing party's base is endemic. It's not reserved for marginals. It's not reserved for battleground seats. It's not reserved for swing voters. I need to emphasize that. It is not the reserve of swing voters. It's everywhere. And um, this, I think, feeds into another point about the UK public is that the cost of living is king everywhere. Anywhere you go, rich, poor, red wool, blue wool, Scotland, England, Wales. The cost of living, the anxiety over incomes, inflation, prices, wages, jobs, is high, tops the poll with every strata of the public you can imagine. You know, if you're trying to think, oh, um, if we go hard on immigration, we'll get, we'll get the right people back. Well, they exist. Those people aren't dead. They haven't gone away. Um, but they are more focused on the cost of living. They're more anxious over health. Immigration sits probably third or fourth there. Okay, don't get, don't, don't think going hard on immigration or going hard on uh, <laughs> um, whatever is going to net you the results you want, because the cost of living is king in every corner of the country, and that's what we saw here today. So just to go back to the polls uh, nationally, this is where we stand: forty-four percent Labour. 27% Conservative, 17-point lead for Labour there. And I need to emphasise this as well. If an election was held today, and we use the Britain Predicts model, which, look, it's okay, it's fine, I, I, I'm quite pleased with it, uh, you're looking at a Labour landslide of between 390 and 410 seats. On that election result, they would not have picked up Mid-Bedfordshire, and they would not have picked up Tamworth. So what you're seeing here is Labour overperforming landslide levels of support. Okay, um, Labour doesn't need Tamworth to get 400 seats or 410 or 420 seats. When it gets to 430, yeah, they're probably winning it. And Labour doesn't need Mid Bedfordshire to get uh, to to even I think 450 seats. I think you're getting close to 500 seats before Labour picks up Mid Bedfordshire. Okay, a lot of this is driven by Tory apathy. And if I have the chart, I'll show you. But um, to be honest, well, what can I say? What can I say? It's Tory apathy across the board. Um, you have about 40%, 4 in 10 of those that voted Tory at the last election. Apathetic, staying at home. A decent chunk of the 
decent chunk of this is Tory voters staying at home. But you're also seeing around 10 to 15 to sometimes as high as 20% of those that voted Tory, those that voted for Boris Johnson's Conservatives, now saying they'll vote for Labour. You also have around 10% saying reform, but we're not seeing that borne out in elections. And you're seeing around about 5% going for the Liberal Democrats. OK, um, bit of a splintering of your support, bit of a splintering of your base. It's bad. OK, compare it to the collapse in support for Labour under Gordon Brown. It's worse. Compare it to the collapse in support for the Conservatives under John Major. It's comparable. It's comparable, okay? And it's easy. Um, I, I've, I think I've been saying it for the past year and a bit. That if an election was held, it will probably be like 1997. But it doesn't feel like 1997, does it? Because the euphoria during a period in the 90s when the economy was growing, when living standards were relatively okay, it, it is not reflected here. The landslide that Labour is due and is likely to get... Um, is a consequence of public despair, not public uh, euphoria. And we're not used to that. We're not used to that. We're not used to a despairing country going for one party by such a large margin. The last time we had a despairing country changing government was 2010. And the fact David Cameron couldn't command a majority on his own um, contributed to the idea that the country was just, just hadn't made up its mind. But right now, in 2023, the country has made up its mind. Two thirds to close to 70 percent say the next election is a change election. You have Labour leading on the economy for the first time since 2007 slash eight. And you have uh, Keir Starmer, despite his own personal ratings not being uh, comparable to people like Tony Blair or David Cameron, actually leading Rishi Sunak, the prime minister, on likability. And when you take Keir Starmer in isolation, more Brits like him than dislike him, but not by much, okay? I think we are in changed times. These are changed times, and the Mid-Bedfordshire and Tamworth by-elections show just that. And that's why I said last night, if anyone joined me on the stream last night, I don't think the polls are going to change that much between now and the next election. I think you should expect the Labour lead to hover between 20, 15 and 20 points between now and the next election. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. The situation could change, the economy could grow... But all things being equal, it's a labor landslide. And I don't see it changing any other way. Just going to add some questions here. Um, Oliver Scanberg Tippen asks, I'd love to know what extent results like these are down to swing voters versus per party turnout. Um, it's a good study. If you like reading books, I strongly recommend you search out a book called Sex, Lies and the Ballot Box. No, it's not smut. It's actually quite good. And um, there's a good chapter in there. It's either the first book or the second. And it talks about turnout. And the idea that low turnout elections warp a representation of public opinion is, is, is basically a bit overstated. Generally speaking, smaller parties do better in low turnout elections. When you look at the rise of UKIP, they won wards on turnouts of 25 to 30 percent in, you know, uh, Oldham, Hartlepool, Grimsby, etc., etc. And when it came to like, you know, general elections where the turnout was like 50 to 60 percent, um, UKIP won some of those wards, but not all of them. So um, I think generally speaking, when you look at low turnout by-elections, just assume the true result on a high turnout by-election is probably within five or so points of the figures you're seeing right now. So if we go back to um, b -b 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 this, um, on a high turnout by-election, you can assume the Tory vote, you know, if, if the polls don't change, is between uh, 27 and 35 percent. Ditto with the Labour vote, it's probably between 40 and 30 percent. And, you know, it could be between 28 and 17%. That, of course, is assuming um, the same resources are put in. And, of course, the polls don't change. Ditto here. Um, you can probably assume the Labour vote is between 50 and uh, 40%. Ditto here uh, between 35 and 45% based on the same resources, same numbers. OK, I always remember, it, you know, we always assume, yes, going back to that UKIP example, um, it was, you had UKIP winning wards in, I think it was Hartlepool, one example. They got 38% on a low, tur low turnout election in 2014. And in 2015, it was a high turnout election. They got, I think, like 34%. And they lost it because, you know, 
there was more of a mass turning out for Labour. The vote wasn't quite as split. Uh, any, other, any other questions? If you want to join the conversation, those of you watching on uh, Twitter, you can do so by going finding us on YouTube. Just look up Britain Alex. You'll see the stream. You'll see me talking. Add your comments there. I'll try and add a few in. But anyway, let's get to the um, juicy bits. Uh, la, 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 la. So, Litchfield, not Litchfield, uh, Tamworth and Mid Bedfordshire. Those two maps you see there, those two shapes. This is how uh, Tamworth and Mid Bedfordshire voted in the 2019 election. And this is by Ward. Unsurprisingly, Almost every ward votes uh, for the winning candidate, the uh, Conservative candidate, because the majorities are so massive. In mid-Bedfordshire, though, there is one tiny sliver of a ward just in Bedford that voted Labour. But I don't think, um, <laughs> I don't think that, that, that detracts from the point. OK, so for those who don't know, I have been able to work out ward by ward results or model ward by ward results for a general election. So we all know how Tamworth voted at the general election. But what about this neighbourhood in Tamworth or that or another neighbourhood or whatever ward? OK, and what I did is I took local elections, I took demographics, I had a look at both. I did some regression modelling. I sh should actually put out a methodology really here just for full transparency purposes. Um, and what I was able to work out or get a decent estimate of how every ward voted in the general election. And I've been able to do that as well for these by-elections using polling to sort of move the numbers around a little bit and get you what um, a, a decent enough projection. I have been able to cross-check it um, with some people at the count. Um, I am sticking by my model. I'm not using it real numbers. These are model numbers, okay? And that's the important thing you need to know. This is a projection, a model of how these wards probably voted in the by-election. It's not definitely, because sampling at the account is just that, isn't it? It's sampling, it's imperfect, it's where you're focusing your attentions. This is a model, this is poll-based, it's okay. And when I compare it to those who are able to share with me some, uh, some information, um, it's okay, it's fine. There are a few errors, you know, the margin of error is around... Um, oh, oh, some of it was six points, some of it was three points. I'll take that as good. In the case of Mid Bedfordshire, that could mean one party leading a ward and one not. But anyway, I don't think it's that big. But anyway, so Tamworth and Mid Bedfordshire by elections are a complete break with how they voted in the 2019 election. These wards voted Conservative. Here is how they voted in the by elections last night. You can see the big changes there. You can see in Tamworth, over there, the town, Tamworth Town, overwhelmingly going Labour. And you see some outreach into the more village wards. And in Mid-Bedfordshire, it's a complete bunfest. It's completely, um, well, a bit of a chaos. And let's just have a look into it. We'll start with Tamworth over here. Now, the 2023 May local elections saw Tamworth, uh, Tamworth Town Council, Borough Council, sorry, 10 of the 8 seats up, sorry, 8 of the 10 seats up for grabs, voting Labour. And what you see here is 10 of the 10 borough council seats uh, voting Labour here as well. So let's just take a look at some of them. So in Tamworth's uh, town uh, centre with the castle, um, you see Labour coming away with 47% um, uh, uh, to the Conservatives, 40 in the more northern ward, Spittle Ward, you have Labour coming away with 47% to 40 also. Um, it's pretty much across it's pretty much standard across the board in these bits. In Bowl Hall Ward, which is um, includes a bit of Glasgow here, Glasgow, uh, you have Labour coming away with 53% to the Conservatives 35. Um, in the wards where there used to be a UKIP councillors, which I think is Bowl Hall, and it's Glasgow here, you'll notice that the uh, part support for the smaller parties, the other parties, is just slightly higher, although not by much. Um, it's they, they pretty much got around 10% across the board here, the other parties. But yeah, you can pretty much see these splits, is that Labour carried Tamworth Town, and it was the areas outside, places like Shenstone, uh, Stonall, Little Aston, Drayton Bassett, or the wards that cover Drayton Bassett at least, that voted Conservative, yeah. So Bourne Vale Ward here, um, 
281 votes for Conservatives, 270 for Labour. This is a model, this is a projection. It's not unreasonable to think that in Bourne Vale Ward, Labour may have topped that. We don't know. This is just a model, this is just a projection, and it probably is a decent indication as to where the support lies. If we look here as well, um, Mies Valley, Mies Valley, uh, yeah, Conservative 47%, Labour uh, 40 So, two takeaways from this. Labour carried Tamworth Town uh, pretty comfortably, and in the case of this ward, Whittington, Whittington and Streethay, they at least won some villages as well. And this, this is what I think illustrates the uh, Tamworth by-election, is they carried the town comfortably, but they were breaking out into villages as well. Not everywhere. you notice that in certain bits, it's very much split. In Shenstone, it's Conservative 51%, Labour 37 In Little Aston and Stonall, Stonall, whatever, it is Conservative 46%, Labour uh, 38 In this bit of what I think is... Fazerly, Faisley, uh, Trinity Ward, it's Conservative 45%, Labour 41 That's Tamworth. That's pretty straight fight for Conservatives versus Labour. Let's take a look at perhaps is the more interesting one. And this is where I think it's a bit, bit, bit chaotic, really. So this is Mid-Bedfordshire. This is a projection, a model projection, of how Mid-Bedfordshire probably voted by Ward in the by-election last night. Is it definitive? No. Is it based on count uh, sampling from the count? No. Is it um, after cross-checking? Is it not bad? Yeah, it's not bad. What it is, is a decent indication that where Labour's vote came from was across the board. Okay? You'll notice uh, in Mid-Bedfordshire there are two, three big, relatively sized, decent sized towns. You have Flitwick, you have... Amphill and you have Shefford, okay, and you also have uh, tiny outskirts of Luton here. These little estates, which are in the parliamentary constituency of Mid Bedfordshire, it's it's how boundaries work. I hate it, <laughs> but yeah. In Flitwick, you have Labour coming away with thirty nine percent, so the Conservatives thirty. The Lib Dems coming away with twenty one there. In Shefford, more Labour forty percent, Conservative thirty three. In Amphill, uh, a complete two-way or close three-way there. Conservatives 34%, Labour 32 in Amphill. Um, what I think is the interesting, well, not interesting, but is there's this tiny little ward, tiny sliver of a ward here right up into Bedfordshire, uh, rather Bedford proper, and that is the safest bit of mid-Bedfordshire for Labour where they come away with 54% of the vote. The neighbouring ward... It's not mar it's not marginal. It well, sorry. What's the what's what's more than a marginal? It's a, it's just a complete flipper coin fest here. Look at this one: Wixom's and Wilstead Ward. Labour thirty two percent, Conservative thirty one, Liberal Democrat thirty. Okay, that is well. It's not unreasonable to think that the party that is, that won here is not ahead here because when you have the gap between first and third being less than 100 votes based on a model projection, it's not unreasonable to think maybe the Lib Dems won this one, maybe the Conservatives won this one. We don't know. But what I'm trying to illustrate to you is this. It's not, it wasn't enough. Labour leading in Flitwick and Shefford would not have got you mid-Bedfordshire. Labour needed to advance elsewhere. And the indication is, based on some modelling and 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 pretty much logic, really, is that they would have led elsewhere and they would have led in these smaller communes, communes, smaller communities, these villages, places like Cranfield and Marston, um, Stuart B as well, um, but, but Horton, Houghton, Conquest, Haynes. It's not unreasonable to think that Labour were winning in villages as well as the towns. Where the Lib Dems come ahead is Wootton and Kempston Rural. They probably might have done they may have not. Again, this is a model projection. And when I when I uh, was doing this, I did think, given this is such a three-way, is there much point in doing this? Is there much point in doing this? Because look at this one. Toddington Ward, Labour 35, Conservative 32, Lib Dems 24, and it's a few hundred votes. It's not unreasonable to think the model is out by a few hundred votes in every ward, which is, what, five or so percentage points. And that could be the difference between first and third place. But what I'm trying to illustrate to you is this. 
is that it's not unreasonable to think that Labour won in a number of villages. It is definitely unreasonable to think that Labour only won in the towns. I think the spread is uh, a lot broader is broader than perhaps you think. And when we just go back up to Tamworth, which I have a lot more confidence in than I do uh, mid-Bedfordshire when it comes to wards, it wasn't just Tamworth Town that they were leading or coming close in, it was the villages as well. Um, though, of course, that indeed was where conservative strength lay. So that concludes, I think, it about the mid-Bedfordshire and Tamworth by-elections. You saw a rep what Tamworth, I think, represents is what, if you ever get on a train and you go northwards and you go past Litchfield, go past Rugeley, go to Stoke, go into the north, go to uh, Bolton, your Berries, your Blackburns, your Burnleys. Um, what I think Tamworth is telling you is this is the apathy, the indifference felt by the Conservative base for the Conservative Party writ large. What you saw in Tamworth is going to happen in parts of the north of England that you won in 2019 on perhaps a grander scale, a grander level of apathy, and greater potentially switches to Labour. It's a bit disastrous there. What Mid-Bedfordshire tells you is, well, the apathy is felt not just in the marginals and the battlegrounds, it's felt across the country, everywhere. Okay, and that's what you need to pay attention to. Um, are there any seats like Mid-Bedfordshire Labour should think about gunning for? Um, I was having a think about this last night. I don't know. I don't know. Because when it comes to a general election, Labour will not have infinite resources. They will need to target. I think, obviously, Alistair Strathen will get enough resources or proper resources when the general election comes, but there won't be other mid-bed-type seats Labour will think about investing in unless there's a by-election. Because you want to win a general election. You want to win in the marginals that matter. You want to win in the so-called red wall. And you want to at least breakthrough in bits of the blue wall and when it comes to that where you're going to be targeting you're not going to be focusing too much on mid bedfordshire which as i say at the last election barely registered a decent score for labor you're going to be wanting to make sure you clean up in rother valley in bassett law um you're going to want to do mid mid cheshire uh, the selection of which is happening now you want you want to clean up in north wales um you probably want to have a go in places like shrewsbury and high wickham uh, more affluent areas, you'll want to think about Worthing and Shoreham, you'll want to think about Dover and Thanet and Medway, particularly, maybe even Rochester and Strood. Maybe. I doubt it, but I think that is could be worth a bit of that, that like Mid Bedfordshire, could be worth a cheeky punt. But it depends where the vote is weak. Right now, the vote is weak across the board. It's not certain that the vote is going to stay weak across the board. But don't write, don't don't rule it out, okay? And um, right now, right now, Labour could win if it put its resources in. It wouldn't be unreasonable to think Labour could win in a lot more seats than it normally would. But when the general election comes, that's not going to happen. The Lib Dems and Labour, understandably, have been uh, scrapping in Med Bedfordshire. It got rather nasty. There were a few claims that I don't really want to uh, repeat here that were made during the campaign. Um, and I think they are quietly agreeing a little truce, understandably, of course. The number of seats where Labour and the Lib Dems are competing with each other is few and far between. Where it exists is in London, and I think that's a consequence of some quite, um, what would I call it, quite specific matters. You know, the case of Chukra Muna standing in cities of London and Westminster, uh, in Chelsea and Fulham, you had, uh, um, uh, I forget his name, another Lib Dem candidate in Wimbledon. Where's where's Wimbledon? Is it here? No, Mitch Morden. It's around here, isn't it? Wimbledon, you have, of course, a um, seat that Labour did win. Sorry, the seat that Lib Dems did win. And um, I think it was uh, on the old boundaries it was Labour or Conservative. I can't remember. I can't remember that indeed. I think with the exception of some London seats over Remainer infighting, uh, or rather Remainer apathy and a lot of them leaving Labour for the Lib Dems, I don't think there's going to be any sort of disagreement campaigns like we saw in mid Bedfordshire. I think those days are gone. Okay, I think in the case of like um, Cornwall, you're going to see uh, Labour uh, allowed to have a go in Camborne and Redruth and Truro and Falmouth 
whilst the Lib Dems try to make some headway in perhaps North Cornwall and eh, maybe not St. Austell, but definitely North Cornwall. Ditto in bits of Torridge, uh, North Devon and others. I think the, like Uxbridge, let's not over-analyse the disagreement between Labour and the Lib Dems in mid Bedfordshire. Let's look at the fact that there are few mid Bedfordshires across the country and there are more Tamworths and there are more Tivertons and there are more Chesham and Amersham's where it's pretty clear who the opposition to the Conservatives is and you're going to likely see that um, reflected in the campaigning and the financing and the resources. So, that's the situation as it stands. The current polls put Labour ahead by 17 points. We are in danger zone for the government. The idea that Tory apathetics will rally back for an election is historically not inaccurate, but it's not a guarantee and you shouldn't bet any money on it because we are in new, uh, a new kind era of politics where apathy for the governing party is so high and the indifference felt for um, Keir Starmer being the next Prime Minister is just not healthy if you want to uh, rally your base to come out against him. You know, if I, could show you, if I could show you the chart, I would. I can't find it right now. But yeah, there's a situation. Big Labour gains, a three-point majority in mid-Bedfordshire, a gain from the Conservatives who won it with 60% in 2019, and a bigger gain from the Conservatives in Tamworth who won it with 66% in 2019. Tamworth voted leave. It was very heavily leave. It saw the largest turnout in an election during that referendum. We haven't seen anything as big since. And it voted Labour. It's motorist heavy. It voted leave. It had a high UKIP vote. And it voted Labour last night. I think that's more telling about the state of this country, the state of apathy, the state of exhaustion with politics than anything you can read from mid-Bedfordshire. So, that concludes it. Um, thank you very much for joining us. I am going to finish up here. And um, there we go. What can I say? I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, two key by-elections. Don't over-analyse them, but don't over under analyze them as well. They are by-elections. The Tory base is apathetic. Bits of it will probably come out at the next election. But not a lot of it. Not a lot of it to save your skin. So, there we go. Um... There we go. Thank you very much for joining us, and I hope you enjoy this recording. Let me know what you think. Um, I need to sort out the sound levels about music. I'll learn that one day. But yeah, have a good weekend. Bye-bye.